Fighters ready. Go. Let's switch gears. We're going to talk about something. Um, we're also going to do a little tribute uh, talking about a, a hip-hop artist that tragically passed away. Coming from the west side of the coast of Los Angeles, he goes by the name of Nipsey Hussle. Mm -hmm. um, March 31st, he was tragically shot and killed, and he had passed away the same day mm -hmm. in front of his store, the Marathon Clothing. And uh, first of all, we gotta say uh, rest in peace to rest him. You know, to prayers to his family and exactly. and friends that people, um, people, the artists that he's worked with before. Because uh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of. I've listened to a lot of his work for for a few years. I've followed some of his, some of the stuff he was talking about in some of his interviews and whatnot. So it's definitely obviously my heart was broken when he had um, passed away. Because yeah. um, uh, he definitely did. He was definitely more than a rapper. He and, was. Uh, one of the, we, we, talk about him for a, little, for a little bit. And that's one of the things I recognized him for because I didn't listen to his music, mm -hmm. but I heard of what he was doing out in California right. when he was starting like a stem cell research camp for kids in his neighborhood mm -hmm. and how he was giving back to his community. Right, you know, yeah. that's how I learned about him because mm -hmm. I love seeing black people, you know, that don't leave the hood. They go back to their hood and they just give back. So that's one thing that got me to work. Okay, all right, I respect you. That's good, you know. And then, of course, you know, I'm a big fan of Lauren London. So I didn't yeah. know, you know who she was talking to at the time. Right. But like I said, I didn't know his music. But, you know, when I heard he got shot, I was just like, Damn, we, mm -hmm. now we can't lose him. We, we, we yeah, yeah, that, that actually, I, yeah, I shed a tear because I, I was really telling myself, I, I was listening to his recent uh, music he put out, Racks in the Middle, mm -hmm. and I was just listening to it, and I was just, for some reason, I was thinking to myself, he, he's going to be good. Like, he's, I know he's a crip mm -hmm. and all that, but don't nobody mess with him. He, he's, he's a guy, um, person, he's, he's definitely put the gangs together in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's done a couple of songs with YG, who's a known blood, mm -hmm. and they've done plenty of songs together. They work together. He's putting the gangs together. Um, like you say, uh, he did STEM mm -hmm. for the children out there. He was also buying Crenshaw, buying property back. Mm -hmm. um, he was also hiring cr uh, criminals or convicts, you know, um, convicts or that came out of jail and giving them jobs. And also today I found out too that he uh, started like working towards getting a casino mm -hmm. or actually it's going to open up in Las Vegas in 2020. So yeah. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So he had, he was definitely doing things for the community. So, um, yeah, when I first heard he, he was shot, I was like, what? what's what's going on? This is something, what's, this is this can't be real. This yeah. got to be, this got to be fake or something. Like It felt like, it really did feel like a bad dream, you yeah, know? And then, exactly. like, within a few minutes, I think, when I posted my picture of him, and I was just, like, pulled through, mm -hmm. sending prayers your way. I want to say about maybe about 30 minutes later, that's when I saw, I, I went, refreshed my Facebook page, and that's when I saw that he yeah. had passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, same here. Like, I was... Pretty much, I put a post saying, you know, pull through and whatnot. And as soon as I refreshed, and, or I seen people say he passed, and I still couldn't believe it. I'm like, nah, he kind of passed. He's still, still going through it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he did pass. Uh, they had his funeral uh, April 11th over at the Staples Center. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was watching that. They were showing on the TV. It was very uh, heartwarming. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, just to see, um, he, his real name is Aramis uh, as Gordon, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm saying it correctly, um, he was he was actually African born, mm -hmm. um, country of Eritrea, uh, not African. Yeah, he was, he was, he was, he was he had an American mom, but his dad was African mm -hmm. from Eritrea, so he had African background w uh, with him, and um, yeah, just hearing him, you know, passing away like that tragically, I was just like, man, like he was like I said, he was actually doing something for the community. Exactly. He was actually teaching people how to create their own money like mm -hmm. people get access get property and whatnot exactly. so he wasn't telling you know about violence he wasn't really talking about violence I mean, he's talking about stuff that he knew obviously and I, I was like like i said i'm a fan of his music so a lot of stuff in the music he was talking about his lifestyle and everything but most of the time he was talking about uplifting his community mm -hmm. uplifting his people and whatnot and i think that's one thing that you know i i that you know i love about certain actors and rappers like you know like 21 savage he's he's doing that in atlanta he you know he started a program where he teaches financial literacy to kids there mm -hmm. and then you know i'm not trying to stay like it's a conspiracy but every time you see certain black athletes or black actors or rappers right. doing things 
something always pops out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, Bill Cosby tried to buy NBC back right, in the day. Right. Now he raped all these women. His mm -hmm. son dies, you know, unexpectedly, you right. know? Or, you know, like, look at Michael Jackson, one of the greatest entertainers in the history of music, you know? Mm -hmm. He raping little kids and stuff, you know? Like, like 21 Savage. He's been only here for years, been arrested before he got famous, and now, oh, he got, he's here on a bad visa. We gotta extradite him. Right. Like, y'all <laughs> didn't know that we all arrested him when he was in school? Exactly. Like, he was been arrested this whole time? Like, and on, I got like... just now realizing that, oh, because he's teaching financial literacy now to black people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that white people fear is when black people start to unite. Exactly. You know? Because when we unite, that's why I say, like, now in this generation, we're so lost, you know, or so misguided because, you know, if we can do like they did back in the 60s and stuff mm -hmm. and just unite, like, we can just kill the game right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And I think, but we so hateful to each other. We so jealous of yes. one another. We show envy. You know, I don't know what happened from the time from then to now, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, if we can all just unite all that stuff behind us right we would actually kill the game right now yeah you know? yeah and it's, it's unfortunate um uh speaking speaking on the case of nipsey uh they got the killer his name was eric holder mm -hmm. apparently it was one of his friends um that was with nipsey uh this this, this the official story they're giving us mm -hmm. uh it's it was one of his friends that was with nipsey apparently mm -hmm. he was an informant for the police so yeah. when he went up to nipsey nipsey told him hey you can't be here or whatnot. I guess Eric Holder was trying to give him, trying to help, trying to ask him to help him with music. Yeah. So at the time, Nipsey was like, "No, you can't be here." So Eric Holder left, came back, shot Nipsey shot. up. You know, killed him. He shot uh, not just Nipsey, but he also uh, shot up another person who was there, or two more people that was there. Um, one of the both, I think, I think both of them survived. I know yeah. one of them survived, and he had an unfortunate thing where they try to send him back to jail. Or yeah, whatnot. but I just found out today that they dropped all charges against him. Good, good. So I, that's I, that, that's the one thing I didn't know. But um, yeah, apparently Eric Holder he's found, and now he's saying that the LAPD set him, pretty much not set him up, but paid him to do it. Yeah, which is. And for the black community, if I mean I know I know people like to I know people like to say the street stuff, you know the street stuff that's happening. But in history, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, I say don't know the history or not, but like a lot there's a lot of things that the government done to black people, and like they killed Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. You guys should look that up. They did that. Um, mm -hmm. They put an informant in the Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. they, they a lot of people. informants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Tuskegee experiments. And they did, Malcolm X. Yeah, Malcolm X. They put mm -hmm. guns and drugs on neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this is not. I'm not. I don't know how, if there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if Eric Holder was bought by the LAPD. Well, but, I don't think he was bought by the LAPD. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was. I have a strong feeling that you know it was something to do with the government because mm -hmm. you gotta think. Like I work in the healthcare field, you right. know. Imagine if, you know, and I see this every single day, you know, patients, you know, oh, my shoulder's not working, you yeah. know, my shoulder's not working, oh, my knee, my this, that, and third, and, you know, they keep coming back, and doctors keep giving them medication, medication, you know, and just keep on giving them all those types of stuff, and this is why I said I'm going to do a documentary on healthcare in America, really, and, like, ins insurance, but besides all that, you know, well, health, the drug endure, um, the drug that like the medication industry is so so that's one of the most expensive things mm -hmm. and it kills me to hear some patients say I can't afford that medication it's too much right. you know because they feel like they need it right you know? exactly when actually you don't really need it let's take it back to the old days back in slavery when you know great grandma you know <laughs> moved up some smoothed up some shit knocked that knocked that cold exactly. right on out yep, yep. you know <laughs> like, I didn't been sick before and my grandma gave me some corn liquor she said look just take a little bit of this corn liquor make you some tea and put a splash in it you're gonna feel better sure enough the next day i thought like i didn't even have no cold going on for a whole week <laughs> you know so i just feel like you know that's why i say it's back people we gotta come together you gotta do your history you know and that's why i always tell people like people got on me it's not the government this fool this guy was a rolling 60s crip mm -hmm. in and out of his neighborhood 
bloods. Everywhere. Where and everybody. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Could have shot and killed him on sight. On sight. Anytime. Mm -hmm. That never, never happened exactly. until that day. Exactly. Until, and I knew when I had saw it a few months ago when he's going to come out and he's going to make a documentary about Dr. C D. Mm -hmm. I knew. I was like, we got to protect him at all costs. Yeah. Because they're going to come for him. They're going to come for him because if he comes out with that documentary, people can say what they want. I don't care what nobody said. That man was gunned down for that. Mm -hmm. He would um, maybe Eric Holder is telling you about the LAPD because maybe. I mean he was supposed to have an interview with them the next day about ending gangs and you know violence exactly, and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's their money maker right there, taking putting black men in jail. Yeah, exactly. So we have a gang member come in here and tell us what to do, mm -hmm. then and how to you know how bring the gang violence how down. The, exactly. You know then that's gonna take our money away. Exactly, you know. Yeah. So people gotta think about stuff like that. But see black people, y'all, y'all one minute y'all. All support black people and everything like that, but then the next minute, give give about a week. Y'all can forget about Nipsey. Y'all mm -hmm. gonna be back to drinking Do up, doing whatever, yeah. whatever y'all was doing before. Exactly. And whereas me, where I'm all blacked down, hey, I'm sorry, I, I'm not with all that mess. No. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna start burning sage in my house. Right, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna start looking towards this, making recipes on being a vegan, drinking more of my water, exercising. I already use black soap and shea butter, mm -hmm. so it's like I'm already, you know going towards that step right there. And I just feel like, you know, it's more black people. We can just come together. This world will be a better place. They ain't going to have yeah, to handle us. For real, like, exactly. Once we pretty much get enlightened and everything mm -hmm. like that, because break it up. I mean, I don't want to say the, the one good thing that came out of his death, but, like, the, the I mean, after his death, the gangs did start coming together. Mm -hmm. So now the gangs start coming together more. I feel like, uh, it, which is really good, because, because, um, I thought it was going to be worse because after, you know, Eric Holder, you know, ran, they found out who he was, you know, people killed some of his family members. And, you know, I thought it was going to perpetuate more of a gang war mm -hmm. towards that. But fortunately, they was able to, the gangs in L.A., not in New York, and now come start coming together, bringing more peace yeah. to the life. So it's just, let's just keep the, the you know, the torch burning exactly. for, for Nipsey, everything he mm -hmm. worked towards, not just Nipsey, for every black individual uh, that's been, you know, brutalized by the police or, you know, exactly. shot and killed. Not even by police, but just by gun violence, by gang violence. You've been, you know what I'm saying, by the drug violence and everything like that. Um, and let's, you know, all come together and start building. Because now we know what we need, to, we need to do. We just got to start doing it. Exactly. So, uh, and we, we don't have to wait for another Nipsey hustle. Mm -hmm. to, you can start doing it right now, you know what I'm saying. And, you know, and if you can't do it, find somebody you can help to do exactly. it. So there's somebody out there doing it right now. So, so yeah, just trying to do something for the community, and I'm I'm trying to do the same as well. I'm, mm -hmm. I want to help st start doing something in the community, help you know with the torch. I've already been a vegetarian for about seven months now, and I'm working towards being a vegan. So I've been you know changing changing my eating habits with that. But um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, we need to start opening you know opening our mind up and start seeing the you know looking. You know, start looking through the reading between the lines. Yeah. Because it's it, like I said, the history. This has been history where you know government has been fucked us over a few mm -hmm. times. So it's just if like I want more history. Just pick up a Sada Shakur's book, honey. Because mm -hmm. that book right there. Yeah. When she was saying in that book, I was just like, oh, the government gets down like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's a it's a lot of her book that she speaks about, and I'm so glad she over in Cuba because she sat so, so, so her foot on this soil. She they gonna kill her ass. Oh yeah. They're going to kill, they kill, kill her quick because mm -hmm. she is uh, a leader. And what y'all to realize, a lot of our Black Panthers are over there. And you got to think, a lot of the Black Panther Party, they're the ones that started the whole food stamps and everything like that. Oh, yeah, food stamps. Um, they were the ones giving breakfast to children in the morning yep. in the poor neighborhoods mm -hmm. one day, people for the kids and stuff. Then the school. government want to come and expose them. But the KKK is still around, though, so I don't see y'all infiltrate them, though. Exactly. They're still around, and they walk around, they capes uptown, and they're faithfully every mm -hmm. single day. Exactly. Like I told one of my friends, and she did not know that Trade Street in up Uptown used to be where they traded slaves at. I was like, people always like to hang up up. Black people like to hang up on Trade Street, but don't know their answers to getting sold on there. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. Y'all better, better, better <laughs> know y'all history. That's crazy. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I ain't fucking with Trade Street no more. Right? I'm not. What I'm, the fuck? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just read too much, yeah. you know? And as you get older, you read a lot. You find out about some stuff, and it, I mean, I'm not gonna say I hate white people because not all white people are bad. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's but not, yeah. 
it's some starting some ones, you know, because they be trying me at my job. Like, I don't know my shit. Mm -hmm. And I love it when my doctor goes in the room, but like, oh, don't worry. My nurse Katrina's going to take care of it. Yeah. 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 I know my job, boo. That's why he hired me, you know, because I know my stuff, you know. But yeah, I see it all the time. Racism is, exists every day, and I see it every day in my job. And people will be like, no, no, it's every day in my job. Because these white people come in, do you know how to do this? Even black people, my own mom, black people try me. I had a black lady one time try me one time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, no, I do my job. Yeah. But hey, it's all good, boo. You can, hey, you blue collar down. Go ahead, boo, do you? Right, exactly. But just know when he walk in his room, though, he's going to bring me right back in so I can do my job. <laughs> just know that, though. So. Hey, I didn't go to college for nothing. Right. But I just feel like, you know, with Nipsey Hussle, though, on the real, though, hearing what he did and some of the stuff that he did in his community, it do make you want to do more. Mm -hmm. That's why I said when my business kicks off, I'm going to give back, whether it be me, you know, just doing things for kids and stuff, or, you know, taking kids out somewhere and doing things with them or having, like, lunches and stuff for kids. I'm going to do something to give back because, you know, our kids, as black kids, they got to know it's more to the world growing up than being an athlete, rapper, or anything that, you know, you can be anything that you want to be in this world, you know. And I want kids to, I want our kids to know that because they don't get those opportunities, you know. Like, mm -hmm. like he, like I said, Nipsey had a stem cell research going on. And, you know, that's good because, you know, he was combining them to, like, know all that stuff so that way they can go out to, like, Apple and stuff and get jobs like Apple, Microsoft, right, you know, exactly. you know, all of them, all them jobs and stuff and be the tech and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I want our kids to know y'all can go out here and do anything. Y'all can change the world. We mm -hmm. all can change the world. But, you know, if we just keep them so grounded and not staying on them with their schoolwork, then our kids going to be lost forever, you know, and we can't allow that, you know. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's just a whole, yeah, it's a sad situation. The whole thing is definitely uh, sad, but I'm definitely um, happy that he was able to do what he needed to do on this earth. Mm -hmm. You know, helped, he helped a lot of people. He was actually a, a more reward influence than even I realized. And I was a fan, I've been a fan of his for years. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize how much of an impact he would have on the world when he had passed away. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, and like I said, uh, and like you were saying as well, let's just let's keep that torch moving. Like let's exactly. not forget it in a week. Let's not make it everybody else. Let's not forget what he did. Let's continue it and try to put it back in the neighborhood. But speaking about business, you mentioned about business. Let's give a shout out to our sponsor of the stream, Excess Blast Drink. Mm -hmm. Fourteen different flavors, no sugar, low carbs. You can get yourself a case. Uh, links will probably gonna be in the bottom description below. You can definitely support the stream. It would be much appreciated. If you want a free case, we'll probably do some type of giveaway or something later on down the line once we get everything situated. Yeah, you chubby people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm not study up. But we will let you know what is going on once we get it all set up. So support us by checking out Excess Blaster Rink. But I think that's it for this week. We will come back. We will try. We will try and come back. And do live stream next week. This week we were, we were trying to get everything in order, but you know, last and we were supposed to start last week, but we had technical difficulties. This thing next Thursday we're gonna be talking about more Avengers stuff. Yeah. Oh yes. Because that was the night before. Day. Yeah. Ooh. So we we'll definitely. By excited. then, Marvel probably gonna be drop like sixteen goddamn trailers by then. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, for real. And we still don't even know what the whole movie is exactly. about. Exactly. We still They could. They could put so many trailers out. We still don't even know the. Exactly. The movie and about. it'd be the same scenes they keep showing. Yeah. <laughs> One scene different every time. Yeah. I just gotta stop. Please just stop. Oh man, yeah, they teasing us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, make sure you guys tune in next week, and we will see you guys. Oh, make sure you check us out on our Instagram, The Excess Lounge. Give us a follow. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. Killer Kawabo, K-I-L-L-A-K-W-A-B-O. You can also follow... Katrina on Instagram at It's Katrina. It's what? It's Katrina K. And then on Facebook, it's Katrina K on there. And my last name is K-A-Y. All right, cool. No yeah, make sure, like yeah. most people think. <laughs> Make sure y'all get it right. <laughs> but we will see you guys next week. Hopefully next week we'll be live on the YouTube page. But we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Have a good night, y'all. Yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Killer Kawabo. Getting Katrina. 
And welcome to the Excess Lounge, the freeform podcast where, you know, we give you our opinions, we're going to give you reviews, we're going to give you... Let's talk about this theory of how Ant-Man is supposed to, be, um, supposed to go up there and his ass, supposed to explode and all like that. All right, we all yeah. know how that, that is. Good. All right, chill out, chill out. Okay. <laughs> Set up for the podcast, okay. which will be on every Thursday from 8 to 9 p.m., so please check us out. Like I said, we're going to give you our opinions on different social issues. We're trying to provide like how you. The, how the government has to do this Nipsey Hussle thing. And now yo, we're, we're, yo, Chris, yo, relax, Chris relax, yo, relax, now, relax, like, relax. We ain't trying to get killed out here. All right? Hey. Power to my people. Okay. Well, so please check us out every week. Shout out to Excess Blast for sponsoring us. Peace.